I'm telling you right now, the coolest thing about Dustin Poirier is he has no idea that we all think he's cool. He truly doesn't. A guy like Dustin, and it's something that's intriguing that I'm, I'm intrigued by with him is, is uh, every time I've been around him, it's just, it's, I kind of actually want to get to know him more. And, and we hopefully we will eventually and break bread together and 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 chat. I, I'm I'm fascinated by the chip that he carries throughout his whole career. He ha it's like a chip on his shoulder. You're you're never like I mentioned. You're never at ease with with some guys, and Dustin is one of those guys. And when these young guys pick on him on, on guys, when you're going against a guy in Dustin Poirier, who has gone to hell seen the devil and go he's he's not really a bad guy it's actually not too bad it, it, you might like it it's it's, it's enjoyable sometimes I, this guy he's done it against max holloway he did it against gage he did it against chandler he did it against all these guys and it's like he knows that too he knows that which is why he has accepted and i truly believe him when he says that he knows he may he may leave a piece of him and probably will leave a piece of himself inside that octagon. Self with the jokes we we're making in the in the sauna. And I know this because the sauna or whatever when you're cutting weight and you're dehydrated, you be saying some shit. So for me that made me kinda like, like him a little bit a little bit more. And then seeing the way that fight played out, he and Max gave it. Like they put their heart and soul into that fight. And then he came out on top and became the interim champ, I believe. And then I went in there and became the interim champ as well. But yeah, Dustin's that guy, man. He's always down to scrap. He's a guy that has, you know, he, when he rocks the, the war cap like Marvin Hagler, I get it because that's how he fights. He's in there going to war. Dustin just shows why he's here. He's beating the established guys, the champions, the good guys, the up and coming guys, and he still continues to do it at a high level. One of my favorite all time fighters. Dustin is the best of best, future Hall of Famer at 155 pounds for a fact. If that's my destiny, I would love to be along those great names that are in, in the Hall of Fame. You know, it's kind of surreal, honestly, because time flies by so quick. I just remember being a kid, like, praying just give me one chance to fight in the UFC and show these guys what I'm made of you know and now we're talking about that it's just like it's crazy I've said before I have tread on the tires and I think I can beat a lot of these guys I can compete with the, the young guys I can beat anybody in the world I feel um we'll see I I, I don't know I, I don't feel like it's I'm 35 this is my 30th fight in the UFC you know so we'll see uh, Dustin's at a point in his life, I think, where he's taking it fight by fight. Um, he's really checking in with himself to see if he wants this, what he wants in his life, what's motivating him. And he's taking his steps very carefully, as he should. I think he really cares about his legacy. He cares about this sport and how he approaches it. Um, and he cares about his family, of course. So. I think we'll see him in one or two more fights. I, I think there'll only be big fights from here on out. Um, and again, to see a guy who has always been nice and polite and has worked his ass off to get where he's at, um, how can you not be a fan of Dustin Poirier, man? If you want to be successful with Dustin Poirier, you probably hang back a little bit and force him to play that tit for tat game and play the game of kind of cat and mouse. It's insane to watch. Not many fighters was willing to take that kind of risk. BSD, very tough, willpower, but none of that was enough to beat Dustin Poirier. And Dustin Poirier landed a beautiful knockout. Beautiful knockout, like in a movie. To be honest, I want to see Dustin Poirier fighting for the belt next. Big risk, big reward, and I think he deserved for his history. And then I might say, Dustin Poirier's stocks just went hmm, to the sky, my brother. The guy is amazing to watch. He's tough as hell. There's no doubt about it. Dustin is known for doing what he did. He yeah. starts off a little slow. He didn't have an opportunity to start off slow, but he allowed he allowed uh, St. Denise to put some pressure on him. He took some big shots, Dustin did, and he weathered the storm. Then he waited a little bit and he said, look, okay, now I'm going to start trying to pick and choose my shots as you open up. You know, Robbie Lawler was very similar in that style. Oh, that he would let you come at him real hard and he would just roll, roll, roll with it. And then he would look to counter with a big left hook, yeah. you know, a right hook, you know, and man, he had some balls. He had some big balls, man. And with Dustin in this fight, 
he, he'd roll he'd take a couple steps back roll with the punches let his back hit the fence then he'd look and he'd try to peek peekaboo through and see if there was an opening yep. and St. Denise gave him a couple openings here and there but man what I loved the most about this is this wasn't a traditional straight like left hook it was more of a uh, an upper left hook uh, uppercut kind of but more of a hook as well touched him on the chin then followed up I mean he's just he's doing things at a level that oh. puts him right there the first time I said your favorite fighter's favorite fighter I was referencing Justin Gaethje and I've used that on Max Holloway before but yeah I mean Dustin Poirier I feel like he's your favorite fighter's and I, I saw how he likes to explain it. like he he's a very big powerful guy he, he moves in and he puts a lot of people away in the first but mate that's what Poirier eats for breakfast. He yeah. loves those fights where you come out guns are blazing. He weathers a storm and then he pieces you up, dude. Like he goes nowhere. And this dude, like I said before, man, like this dude has a, like, I wonder if he, I, I want to see his DNA. I want to see if this dude's Mexican. A lot of people don't know this, but Justin Gaethje is Mexican. And I wonder if a guy like this might have some of that Indian Aztec Mayan blood in him. Cause I feel like there's something in there. It feels good, you know, to write the ship, take a chance, fight a guy outside of the top 10 when, you know, the, the, I don't even know how many, but my last opponents have been former world champions, huge main events, huge fights. And now this got this young guy in his 20s who finished his last five opponents representing France, got a lot of momentum behind him and a country behind him. And I'm like, you know what? Let's see if I still got it to fight these young guys. And it feels good, man. You know, it feels good to win. It was a long training camp. It was, it was stressful, had a lot on my back, and it feels good to win. It all lines up perfectly. Dustin Poirier, the diamond versus Islam Makachev. I think with that performance, he leapfrogs everybody. Because we always say, let's see how these things, you know, Dana says it all the time. Let's see how everything plays out. And a fight like that, will cause you to leap from because the public demand, number one, he deserves it. He's been around forever. He's a former interim champion. He's not getting any younger. He's always craved being champion of the world. And I think taking on that opponent, beating him the way that he did, given the fact that Charles Oliver and and, and uh, Sarukian, they're not fighting to the end of April. I was with Dustin on Saturday after his victory with people around you chanting his name. I'm telling you, he doesn't know. He he does not know where, where he stands in this industry. <laughs>